You don't always have to travel to the ends of the earth to find incredible places. This series of Roam Over Landing will be taking a look at some of South Africa's top overlanding destinations. We will be traveling with familiar faces and some new ones too. We will be seeing some different vehicle setups and even making some tweaks to the Hilux along the way. It's going to be a one of a kind adventure and we will be taking you all the way with us. This whole series is made possible by the power of Red Ark and in part by Bush Tech Canopies, Terrain Tamer and Easy All. All packed up and ready to go, we left Pretoria taking the straight shot down the N1 en route to Kharib Dam, which would be our stopover on our way to the Baviaans Kloof Mountains. It was a long weekend, so the roads were sure to be busy and the campsite would probably be packed with fellow travellers. Our plan was to leave much earlier than we did, but you know how plans go when there is a long weekend around the corner. So we joined the chaos and let the adventure begin. It's the best feeling when you break through the masses and get further away from the city. The traffic relaxes and we could settle in for our six hour drive ahead of us. It's always great to stretch the legs on the Hilux and test out some of the new systems we're running. So I've got to be sneaky with my snacks. But Rulfi and his dad are on a special diet. And I'm trying not to make them feel bad, you know, by eating snacks and delicious things in front of them. So according to them, we're eating healthy. But what's happening behind the scenes? Gotta have a chip or two every now and then when you're on a road trip. We've been having an incredible amount of rain this year. Most of our dams are overflowing and the landscapes are looking lush. The skies are painted with clouds. Our late departure set us up for a late arrival. So we were definitely going to be driving into the night. Luckily, we all have super easy setups to use, so rocking up in the dark isn't much of a hassle. Okay, so that's us here. We're now at Kharib. We are all signed in. We are gonna... <laughs> We're gonna get dinner going. It's 8 o'clock at night. Or well, half past 8 by now. So, yeah, quarter past 8. Not too bad. Make some dinner. Get ourselves set up. My first time staying in the new rooftop tent. Which I'll show you tomorrow morning. But, um, yeah. We got some fun stuff. Let me know right away from these guys. They don't know where they're going. So, we'll catch up with you once we're in camp. We found ourselves a little spot to set up and quickly cook a meal before getting to bed for the evening. You know, we come to Kharib a lot, but I mean, look at this. It's completely flooded at the moment. So I wonder if that's going to be a sign for what's to come from the Bavians Cliff. Because I think you cross like the river 27 times or something like that there. So it should be a fun adventure. Look at you hiding away in there. Nice and snug as a bug in a rug. <laughs> It's wet, and we had a dude that party till five o'clock over there. So, yeah, first night of camping. First night of camping. <laughs> I can't wait to get away from people. So we actually have a different type of awning on this cruiser from Easy On. It's called the Manta 270. And so far, initial impressions are pretty good. It's got a lot of space underneath it. So let's see, it's got less space at the back than the back, but it's got more space out the side, which actually suits this cruiser really well. That was good timing, Rolfi. <laughs> Shh. 
Yeah. Sure. Yeah. It's wet, eh? It just came down. <laughs> Flat box style. Yeah, my, my, my car's going to be a boat soon. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to have to sign up for the Gharib Yacht Club. Oh, no. Oh, goodness. It's literally in front of the Bucky at the moment. So, Adrian, how's it setting it up in the pouring rain? <laughs> Uh, it's not so bad, but it's not a bad thing. It feels tiny in comparison. It's a one person awning. It's a one person <laughs> awning, for sure. But look, at least we've got a bit of extra covering. Yeah. Yes, it's really coming down. Oh, it's do a bit of trickery here. Yeah? What's nice with these ones is they're easier to get water ready because you've only got two axes to worry about. So you can set up something like that much easier. We so have an awning. That is uh... That's why you have an awning. It's not just for the sun, but it's for the rain too. Camping in the rain is never fun. It's just everything gets soaked. But yeah, we are pretty much good to go now. Everyone's packed and ready. We're gonna be making our way through to the Balvianskloof now. We're staying at a campsite called Eight Spun, and we're staying at their bush camp. Now, a lot of the places where we are staying on this trip are actually at their bush camps. We've tried to obviously get as you know quiet camp as possible and all that stuff but it's a it's a long weekend so we got to be realistic about what's happening like now at Kharib everyone was using this as a stopover for you know their long weekend so it is a busy campsite it's big enough to accommodate everyone though so it's been fine I'm keen to see what the Bavians Kloof is all about I've never been there I've heard a bunch of amazing things about it so um, yeah let's do this So here we are at the Kharib Dam wall and it is absolutely hammering out the gate. That is, all the sluices are open, that thing is running, completely overflowing actually. Amazing, it's almost like Victoria Falls with all this, the, the mist rising up. Epic, really epic. But now we're making our way through to Krafrenet. By the end of the day, hopefully we're going to be in the Barbianskloof. Actually amazing to see like the crew so green. It's crazy. We had a solid 400 kilometer drive ahead of us today and I knew it was going to be a good one. With some moody weather, beautiful scenery and some really lovely tar roads ahead of us, the kilometers just melt. So beautiful. And this weather really, it's, it's, it's nice. I enjoy driving and spending some time driving in the rain doesn't scare me at all. Andy and I have driven through some pretty crazy stuff. We've driven through thick fog banks, we've driven through hailstorms and rain and sandstorms and all sorts of things. But this nice moody weather, low hanging clouds, it's pretty beautiful. So we managed to top up our battery already for two hours of driving. That is amazing. we came through the Lutzberg Pass, one of the highest passes in the Karoo. We would descend and pass through the town of Grafrenet on our way towards the Bavianskloof. But along the way, we would be greeted by millions of little friends. Oh my God, here we go. Oh! <laughs> Look at that. Oh no. Oh no. Oh, just like mashed through half the swarm. It's massive. Oh god, here we go. Ah! <laughs> ow, 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 
Ow. Yeah, Ow. Those are good. Okay, I'm trying to slow down. Ow. 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 Oh my god, we're hitting so many. These areas in the Karoo have been absolutely plagued by locusts recently, but we figured we would probably be through it all by now. I mean, how big can a locust swarm actually get? I think we were about to find out. Yeah, this is huge. This, this, this is huge. It is just absolutely bonkers. Jeez. I've never experienced anything like that before. It's like being in a hailstorm with no rain. It's so odd. What a beautiful part of the country as well. Jeez, just transforming all around us. We can definitely tell we're getting closer and closer to the Bobby Arnskloof. Our journey today had taken us along the N9 from Gharib Dam through Grafrenet, and we had now arrived in the town of Willowmore, where we would turn off the tar and hit the gravel for the next few days. Our campsite at Eightspun will put us at the doorstep of the Bavianskloof. So there we have our first bit of gravel. So we've aired down, we've got our swarm all around us. And we're making our way to our campsite now. Oh, vehicles have been doing great on road for the past day, but now it's time to see how these babies go off road. We expect nothing but the best. Is the cruiser ready? This that, is what it's been waiting thing for. Everything was born ready for this type of stuff. But what a car! What a car on this road, eh? It is. That's where IFS and solid axles in the front differ so much. Is this one is worse than the tar, but it is so much better on the dirt. I'll have to try it sometime. I'm afraid to let you. You're never going to want to give it back. <laughs> This is very, very beautiful. It's actually quite reminiscent of the Swartberg. You can actually see like the mountain style looks the same, but the Swartberg is also very close. But uh, you can see here where there's potential for a lot of little streams and little rivers to cross and all that stuff. But it is very beautiful. So welcome to the Babiansklof. The Nivakluf Pass will officially take us from the Karoo into the Babiansklof. It is a spectacular pass and it is really hard to capture the scale of the mountains on camera. This is one you're just going to have to come and experience for yourself. keeps getting better and better. We, <laughs> we are just in the beginning. Oh man, I wonder what our campsite's gonna be like. We were chasing sunset, 
but the scenery was just too incredible not to take our time and enjoy the drive. So we have arrived at Eight Spun. Let's go and find ourselves a campsite. Here we are. How was it? Stunning, eh? What, what, what scenery. Eightspun actually has a sneaky little bush camp that you can request to stay at. It has its own ablution block with flushing toilets and a shower. And it is set on grass lawns in an incredible setting sandwiched between the dry riverbed and steep mountain faces. What a spot to set up camp and spend the evening. So we got rum steaks, pot of veggies, and a wolf. Like, what more do we need? We're eating healthy. Yeah, no unhealthy things except for Pringles in some vehicles. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> let's not talk about that. You saw nothing. We also oh. had some, some butt chops today. <laughs> What an amazing place to wake up in the morning. It is absolutely beautiful. But that's it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in. And uh, I hope you enjoyed our first arrival in the Bobby Arndt's Kloof. And I hope you guys are going to join us for the next episode. Because it is going to be my first time getting behind the Land Cruiser 79 steering wheel and I'm going to be taking over the cruiser for the day. So it's going to be a lot of fun. Anyways, remember to like, comment and subscribe and I will see you guys on the next adventure whenever that might be. Cheers. So just tell me what's happened, happened with the Hilux situation. Yeah, I see your dad is piloting yeah. Rome 2 there. So Rome 2 no longer belongs to me. It now belongs to my dad. And there's a Rome 3 on its way. Oh, looks so. But we'll, we'll go get into more of that at a later stage. I think so. It's a bit too exciting for people right yeah. now. Thank you so much for tuning into another episode of Rome Over Landing. If you enjoyed it, please remember to pop a like on the video and let me know down below in the comments what some of your favorite parts are or if you have any questions about the equipment we use on this trip. And remember to subscribe so you don't miss the next episode. Anyways, I'll catch you on the next adventure. Cheers!